I've sent you again. Okay. I'm recording. Um, but I don't see how to give you, uh, give you, hold on. Uh, allow to record. There we go. Yes. yes. Okay. Hi guys. Hi. Welcome back <laughs> to another episode of Sexpression. I have somebody really special with me and her name is Jennifer. And Jennifer is the inventor, founder of an amazing product, which I'm dying to open. It's called Graphic Sex Project. And what it is and how far we've come with Graphic Sex Project is something Jennifer is going to teach us and tell us about. Oh, Over to you, Jennifer. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank oh, you me. so much, Shikun, for that nice introduction. <laughs> yes, this is Graphic Sex Project, and I am the artist behind it. Uh, I do it as, it started as an installation, which I do as like a live installation where uh, people come and it's kind of, it, it, it's sort of funky to explain. At first, it's like, well, what, you're talking about cubes or something? And yeah. what it is, is people take uh, little cubes, one centimeter meter color cubes, and they make a graph out of these cubes of their sexual values, their sexual preferences, their favorite sexual flow, you know, what they like to do. So they're, they're deciding what each color stands for. They make a legend that describes it. And then they, then they make this graph. And I do this as a live installation where people make, wow. people make graphs. They're super fun with it. And then, then I have a display of all the graphs that people have made. I've got like a thousand graphs that people have made just about something about their sex life. Uh, they're it's very fun. It's sort of a non-sexual sexualization. You know, it's like, like the, the um, um, cause it's cubes and that they're brightly colored and it's very non-sexy. So it's really approachable, but yet it's very intimate what people, what their preferences are, what their values are. Uh, so this I made as a, like an at home kit. So, you know, you don't have to go to an installation, you can do it at home. And that's what that is that you have in your hand. I'm really excited for you to open it and, uh, and, and see i'm excited too i've been dying to open it thank you so much for sending it all the way to india where i am oh, right now my pleasure my pleasure really excited for you to open it okay so um we have something so yes there's a there's a big there's a metal plate yes that's a magnetic that's a that's a metal plate and what you see on there is the, the squares are magnetic squares so you could take those off you break them in pieces so those oh, that's wow. how you make your graph um, is with these little squares. And then you'll also see in that package is, uh, is a bunch of words. Do you see all the words? There's 250 wow. words, uh, just a bunch of sexy words. These are all like, I called these from the graphs that people make at the, in the graphic sex project installation, like I, what, what kind of words people use. It's all sorts of uh, sexual activities and body parts and verbs and nouns and pronouns and stuff. Kind of like refrigerator poetry, sort of, but for <laughs> sex. <laughs> oh, really uh, so you pick out the words that are you know, uh, things you like to do, things, words that appeal to you, and you define what all of these squares, what each color of square stands mm -hmm. for. Um, Okay, so so it's like suppose this green color, yeah, might stand for cuddle. Yes, perfect, exactly. So you so you break break those. You have to break all those words apart, and so that may be a little time. Okay, so I take this. How do I break? Oh, okay, so I need to break it like this. Yeah. The green one. Yeah. And so just I put it there somewhere here. at the top or the bottom, or the, but that's fine. Like and this? then put yeah, and then put cuddle next to it. Okay. This is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind okay. of making a little story, you know, what are the things that happen in a sexual experience for you? Yeah, just like that. So now, now green stands for cuddle. Oh, um, okay. Is it? Um, and then you, and there are, there are 10 colors. So you could, you, you, you have 10 elements to your story what are the things that you like to do what's you know important to you in a sexual experience so what does yellow stand for uh nipple, <laughs> nipple yeah. and then there are verbs there there's like you could make it you could be more specific than that you could be suck nipple or lick nipple or kiss nipple mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah uh 
Okay, cool. Wash. So there's one called yes. wash. Wash. Network. You know, it's a surprise. It, you know, a lot of people include some element of hygiene in their crafts. Um, yeah. Maybe, yeah. The, so I've done like kind of I did like kind of a word crunch of all the words that people use in the graphs from the Graphics X Project installation, and mm -hmm. and then did a word count of you know what were the words that were used more often, and uh, yeah, so some version of washing or hygiene or cleaning or something was uh, was in a. Um, you know, a fair number of graphs, so I included it. You know, people, people think being clean is important. Yeah. So how does it work? So, like, suppose if I chose wash nipple, uh -huh. I will put one yes. color. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so that so this is kind of at the bottom of your 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 um of your board here. This is kind of your legend. You know what the colors stand for, uh, and okay. then you use more of the squares to to turn it into a graph or maybe like a time. Uh -huh. Like you know, okay. what happens first, what happens next, and use more cubes to be in uh, that it has higher priority for you, or you spend more time doing that. Or so you could make, for instance, a timeline where you know here's what happens first. There's a bunch of it. Here's what happens next. There's a little bit of it. Here's what happens next. There's a lot of it. You know, so you do <laughs> like different, different numbers of squares. And so yeah. what you end up with is kind of this map of what your, say, your ideal sexual experience is, or what a fantasy is, or what a, uh, what a, what, what happened last night, and what you hope to happen again, or, you know, you, so it's, you're, you're, you're telling a story in this very sort of graphic kind of in a pun yeah. way, it's, because it, it's like, like graphing, um, and so it's a, it's a very, kind of relatable thing to for people to look at and see what is what are your values what are your preferences what what do you see as a sexual experience um, you know I, I think it, I see it as kind of a, a sexual script in a way I think we all have our sexual scripts that um, how we imagine sex is supposed to, to, to flow, um, how we have internalized how cu the, the culture at the world tells us how sex is supposed to, to flow, how, you know, we see in movies, we see in porn, we see in, you know, books, or, you know, we talk to friends, and we have this idea of what we think sex is supposed to, to be like, and that is our sexual script. And sometimes it's, it's handed down you know, straight from the culture to our, to our sexual brains. And sometimes it may not be the best sexual script for our body or for our relationship. It's just how we think it's supposed to be, how we're right. to expect it to be. So I, I look at this as one way to think about what your sexual script is and then it, how, much, how, is it, um, how is it serving you? Is it serving you well? You know, how could you change it? What would it be like if you did, uh, if you, you know, washed your nipples before you, <laughs> before you cuddled instead of after, you know, like, like <laughs> so, you know, you can move things around. Yeah. You know, it's on this plate and you can share it with a partner and you could say, you know, I, I see, you know, doing this exercise that what I really want is, you know, a lot of this one activity. I want, you know, I wish there was a lot of oral sex. We have a little bit of oral sex, but I really want more. Or we have a lot of oral sex and I wish there was less. You know, so that you can like think about, you know, the, the, those kind of order and proportion in your sex life, rethinking your sexual script, rethinking, you know, how this, what is the sexual flow? How is it supposed to unfold? Is that best for me? Yeah, and you know what? Um, this is like a crazy use. It can also work as a sexting tool. It, yes, no, it totally could because you could take a picture of it and send it yeah. to your partner and say, "Here's a plan Absolutely. for tonight." Absolutely, <laughs> and yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, here's 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 you, you know you play around with the squares, do something a little bit different, and then and then share it with the partner as a way to say, you know, here's what I'm thinking. Here's let's try this script. Let's try this <laughs> <laughs> and how did you come up with this idea? Um, you know, my brain just works in weird ways, I guess. Because <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's a little funky. Um, I guess I was thinking about that exact kind of thing in my own in my own sexual life. Is that is is what? How does it change for me? When we do things in certain orders, like with with some of my partners, I have like particular ways that it tends to go. And, and I, I, we, I think we sort of have um, a, 
a base a, a number of basic scripts like I, I think uh, we with my partner I have like maybe a, uh, a dozen different scripts of the way of the way sex tends to happen um yeah. you know sometimes we fuck first thing <laughs> you know and sometimes we have just you know long long <laughs> sessions of foreplay and we never get to the fucking you know and and there's you know and there's sort of s standard ways that it unfolds right um and i was thinking about the differences between those for me you know what do i like it how do i like it better what in, in what what scripts are better for particular, you know, moods I'm in, or how is it different when this happens first, first versus this happens first. So I, was, I was just thinking about those kind of things. And I started playing around with um, my, my kids. We, we homeschooled our children. And we had these, we had these um, Miquan blocks. Are you familiar with Miquan blocks? They're like, they're, yeah. they're teaching kids math and counting skills. And they're based on like one centimeter uh, cubes. And so I was playing around with the Mequon blocks, making like I made the first sex graph with the Mequon blocks of, you know, the order things happen. Um, and so I, I thought that other people would like this too. I do a women's, um, I started this women's discussion group where we get together once a month to talk about sex. And I brought a bunch of these math manipulatives, really, um, to my women's sex rule discussion group. And we all played around with them and it was just super fun. And started lots of talking and lots of conversation about uh, just, you know, what, what, what things we like, what proportions we like them in, how, how long something happens. When does the sex, when does the sexual experience start? You know, it was really interesting doing with a bunch of women. Some women would start their graph uh, you know, with like texting in the morning or, you know, making plans or some people women would start it with going out to, you know, with a, with fun things, do it, doing fun things with your part, with a partner beforehand, you know, going out to dinner. Uh, and some women would start it with, you know, taking your clothes off, you know, so like, where does the, I think, you know, thinking about where does the sexual experience start for you is, is a way to sort of reflect on the, the values you have about your sexual experience. What's, what is important to you? Um, you know, if, you, if, you're, if a sexual experience starts for you when you're doing something fun out in the world with a partner, then that's a part of what's it, what you value in your sexual experience is that connection. And, and, the, and sex doesn't happen until you make that connection. Yeah. Interesting. So, so where are you with it? Have you been selling them? Where, where can people find them? So um, I have, um, I, I'm selling, I'm put, putting them together right now as kids just out of my home. <laughs> Did you see behind me is my little production factory. Um, so I, I'm selling them as kits. I'm, I'm also, uh, I've got a bunch of things I'm working on right now. I'm, I'm also do, uh, working with some universities to sell the installation itself, to bring, bring the you know, inst installation to universities to do um, as kind of a, a live event uh, in, for their like sexual health and wellness uh weeks a lot of universities do this do do a sex week where they have a bunch of of interactive events and workshops and things for university age uh kids to learn all about sexual health and wellness lots of issues and so this is this is placed as a way to help people um talk about sex have have good healthy conversations about sex because you, you make this graph and then the i think the, the the powerful thing about it is you share that with a partner and it's like yeah. a visual aid for a really good conversation about what your values are and what your preferences are True. so like if suppose if uh, if a user wants to use these graphs and they don't have the kit or they do not have the installation where yeah. are they going to get it Oh, well, it actually, you can make one online on my website, graphicsexproject.com. It has a, has a graph maker. Um, so you can also make one online and you can, you, can, uh, you can share that with a partner right from the website. Uh, or you can, um, uh, you know, send it, to, send, it to a, send it to a partner and uh, add it to the collection if you want. So, it, that, so you can see on, 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 uh, on the website, there's a gallery of some of the best graphs that I've got yeah. of the installation. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you like a last yeah. question and it's mm -hmm. completely not related to okay. uh, the graph. 
but it's still it is related to it. Mm-hmm. Has it changed you as a person after being, you know, after these graphs coming into your life? Has it changed you? Has it changed me, me as a person? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, y- well, yeah, I mean, and doing any kind of thing like this, uh, which is, um, uh, especially as a, as a sexual entrepreneur, sexual health and wellness entre- entrepreneur, um, I, I think it's, it's made me think really differently about my sex life. And I, and I, it, it certainly it, three years ago when I first started like women uncorked, um, uh, part of it was feeling this lack in my life of, yes. of, of having these conversations about sex, not so much with a partner, but with, with friends, you know, out like out in the world having like, like, I think there's a lot of taboo and, uh, and shame, uh, around sex and talking about sex openly and honestly with other people. And so I, I really wanted to have those kinds of conversations with, uh, with women, especially I wanted to open up that kind of, cause, cause I think if we can talk about sex with our friends, um, that it has just so many benefits and it, 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 that brings, um, it, it's, it's, practice for talking with a partner it's you can work through things with friends maybe if you're having trouble with a partner it, it people feel um can feel very alone in their uh in their sexual experience that they're you know wondering if they're they're weird or if they're the only one who has this problem and i mean it's, you, it's really important to, be able to talk to a partner about that and it's also really important to, be able to talk to friends about that absolutely and there's a ton of barriers to talking with people about intimate sexual topics um, and I think that, you know, as women, we can really benefit so much from sharing those things with other women and, uh, and talking about, um, about sex when you're, you know, when you're dating and you're having sex with a lot of different partners and you want to, you know, you, you want to like have people you can bounce those ideas and issues and problems off of. And, uh, so I think that that's, that, that, that was one of the really motivating things to, to me to get started in this is to open up those kind of conversations. Um, and I've definitely, you know, gotten a lot more, um, uh, I talk about sex a lot more and I have, and I, and I, and, I, and I, it's gotten easier, you know, like at first it's, it was, I was struggling with the same problem I was tr- trying to solve as, you know, struggling with, with talking openly about sex and getting past my shame or getting past my embarrassment. And uh, so that's helped me tremendously um, uh, to being part of this business is, uh, uh, you know, I'm, and I think that I'm helping other people have conversations and I'm certainly helping myself have conversations. Absolutely. Absolutely. I keep on telling everyone that after starting tickle.life, I've actually changed. I've become more open. Yeah. It's just because there are so many conversations that are happening. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think that having that talking about sex is a very, it, it, breeds a closeness between people, you know, because it's so intimate. So you have, uh, and, and, and it takes us so much, you know, trust, you know, giving and accepting from the other person that, you know, I think when you have a conversation about sex, you automatically feel closer to that person. <laughs> that's, <laughs> true, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. But, Jen- but Jennifer, this was yeah. amazing. I can't wait to play with it. <laughs> I'm already yes. thinking what to put, like, you know, what block for what. But um, thank you so much. And I know that, you know, this is going to help a lot of people, especially people who find it very difficult to put words to what yes. they're feeling. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think is, is great about that, that that magnetic kit is like you don't have to think of what the words are, the words are there for you. And I know, I also, know. There's also blank ones, so, you know, you can fill in your own words if there's, if there's, oh, there there is. Yeah. Yeah, right. I put lots of blanks in because, yes, because people need blanks. <laughs> but that's really cool. But thank you so much. Thank you I so much. I hope so we talk fun. again. Yeah. And as it is your part of Tickle.Live, so obviously we'll get to see you there. <laughs> but thank you so much. See you very, very soon. Yes. Bye. Thank you, Shakun. Bye-bye. Uh, I think one minute. Shit. Was it being recorded? Uh, I recorded it.